you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name is Colleen Taylor, and here with me in the studio is the CEO and co-founder of Food Spotting, Alexei Androjewski. Food Spotting just sold to Open Table today for $10 million in cash, and so we are excited to have you here to talk about the deal. Thanks so much for having me in. The to last start, minute here. Yeah, a little last minute, <laughs> but congratulations! I'm sure it's been a busy day for you. Yeah, it's been an exciting day. I've been really happy to see how people reacted, because um, you never know with acquisitions. Like people tend to, can sometimes get upset because their favorite company got acquired. Um, the response was amazingly positive. Like it was the most common response was, "I love Open Table. I love Food Spotting, and I can't wait to see what they do, what we do together." And I think that was uh, really reassuring to all of us. And now the important thing here that you guys have noted is. That that this isn't, you know, an acquire and then shut down situation. Yeah, so I mean this is what why this opportunity was so attractive to us is that Open Table actually values more than just how many engineers we're able to hire. They value the content and the community we've been able to build. And that was really important to us and that was something that struck us as very um, you know genuine a genuine interest in food spotting and what we've built. I mean when you spend the past five, you know, four years, I guess, almost four years now of your life working on some idea and trying to make it real, like, you know, just giving that all away can feel like, you know, giving up on something. And this is an opportunity to continue that same dream of helping people find great dishes everywhere in the world. And we're really excited about that aspect for sure. And so you guys have a team of 10, yep. is it? <laughs> yeah, so you guys are all joining. And then is the team going to grow a bit? What's the future prospects for food spotting under Open Table? Yeah, so we'll, we will be focusing on initially on um, you know bringing some of the best parts of food spotting over to Open Table's products. Um, we've been partnering with them for a while. And you can actually see on their website and on their apps today um, just some food spotting photos starting to pop up, which is really cool. Uh, but we realized we could do so much more if we partnered together. So we'll be focusing actually initially on continuing that project, that integration with them. Um, and I think what will be great is I'm really excited. I'm, my background's in user experience design. I'm from Adaptive Path. Um, and we'll be kind of part of really bringing that user experience and design minded thinking and building a team around that. And I'm, that's what I'm really excited about. And um, just for anybody out there who doesn't know, because food spotting is incredibly popular, um, but it's still a relatively new app, can you explain what, what it is? Yeah, absolutely. So, food spotting is an app for recommending dishes at restaurants uh, using photos. So, a few years ago, I traveled to Japan and I learned about a dish called okonomiyaki. And I came back to San Francisco and tried to find that dish in San Francisco. And I realized there were a lot of apps for searching for restaurants, but nothing for searching for dishes. And so Food Spotting is really the first app where you can look up bacon waffle milkshake and actually find that somewhere in your city. And uh, you know, it's been amazing to see the amazing like hidden gems people have uncovered. Uh, for example, if you open the app near here, you'll see like the Brussels sprout chips at Merlot. So if you're visiting someone and you need to know what to try, it's those Brussels sprout chips. But uh, you know, it's cool to, and like truffle pretzels at uh, 25 Lusk is another team favorite. So we've discovered things like the truffle pretzels and literally I got up off our butts and went over to 25 Lusk and ate them on the spot. So like the photos and seeing what people recommend can really draw you into a place. Um, that you wouldn't have thought to try otherwise. And I might have never made it into 25 Lusk if it were for those truffle pretzels and a lot of tech parties. <laughs> cool. And I want to talk about those parties a little bit because food spotting is pretty well known for putting on some pretty cool events. I remember at South by Southwest last year, you guys hosted a really cool barbecue cook-off thing, um, and, and there have been other things. Is that going to continue? Can you talk a little bit about, about that, the events that you guys have had as a company, and is that going to continue? Yeah, so w one thing we love about Open Table is they really share a lot of the same culture, and they have a lot of similar like creative parties. And one of the things we've done with Food Spine is tried to, like we've been to so many tech parties just having been in the area for a while. Um, and a lot of times it's kind of the same thing, like drinks, and you stand around, and you talk. Um, so we've been trying to do participatory parties where the audience or the people who come to the party are engaged. So we just did um, the past one. The last two we did was a milkshake mix-off and a pie potluck. Uh, the pie potluck was great because people brought everything from pizza pies to sh um, you know, savory pies to sweet pies from all the best places in the city. And we just had a pie potluck. Um, and then more recently, we did the milkshake mix-off with frozen custard and Keiko and the Seeker wines. And they just, like, uh, you could pick any toppings you wanted from this big bar of toppings that people brought and make a shake out of them. Um, that was all inspired by just things we've discovered on food spotting. Uh, Open Table really shares that same culture, and that's why we're really excited about um, just that fit as well. Good news. Um, and I also want to ask, because now you've come to the end of a very important chapter. I mean, you've, you've sold a company now, which is huge. Um, is there anything looking back or any kind of key lessons that you've learned along the way? If I were you know, an entrepreneur and said, what's your advice to me? Do you have any, any stories? I think you know for me the big thing was just being driven by a, 
a clear vision and getting people excited about that vision and being able to tell great stories. Um, like back, you know, four years ago when I started just the, it was just the seeds of this idea. The most important thing was communicating that to other people and seeing like, are you excited about this idea? Would you use an app like this? Uh, being able to find a co-founder was about telling a great story. Like I have this vision for this app where you can find bacon milkshakes or okonomiyaki. Um, you know, would you want to help build this with me? And um, you know, throughout the way, like you know, meeting investors is about telling a great story. Um, you know, meeting potential acquirers was telling a great, figuring out a great story of like, oh, what would this look like if we could work together and crafting that story. Uh, with the team we were working with. And, and so I think you know, the one thing I've learned is the most important thing you can do as a founder is talk about your idea publicly. Like, Don't try to keep it held back and share your story with everyone who will listen because you just never know who you'll meet or connect with um, any day. And then you can, I guess, <laughs> amend the story or find out what works, what doesn't when exactly. you're trying to tell. Right, exactly. The more you tell the story, the more you can adapt it as, as you get feedback and you hear like, well, I don't really want to find that kind of thing. Or I'd really, what I really like about food spotting is the, um, you know, being able to get a recommendation at a restaurant, um, which is another big thing that we've realized. Like people use it at a restaurant to see what's good there and what their friends like there, um, which of course, you know, is like we were focused so much on the discovery, but realizing a lot of people use it like a picture menu for a restaurant um, was kind of revealing to us. Even the fact that we focused on photos in the first place. Um, like we didn't want to be a photo app and we didn't want to be a photo sharing app, but we realized there were all these people already taking pictures of their food. And when I showed them the original mock-ups, they were kind of like a Yelp for dishes and you know, there was like, you know, little, little photos, star ratings, kind of the usual. Um, but people were like, you know, you really should emphasize these photos. The photos could really get me into a place. And so, you know, I went back, remocked it up and the food spotting we have today with the horizontally scrolling cards was born from way back three and a half years ago. And I also want to ask because there's been, there have been a couple stories out just in the New York Times and culture sections about um, restaurants and how they feel about people taking photos of their food. Um, some chefs are positive, some chefs are negative. Do you have any insight on that or any tips for those of us who want to take photos in a restaurant, use food spotting, but not piss off anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we always encourage people to be respectful and, you know, be respectful of even if they don't agree with the policy, be respectful of the policy. Um, that said, you know, it's, a f it's a really like the New York Times piece focused on a couple of high-end restaurants in New York and San Francisco, but the vast majority of restaurants we've talked to at Food Spotting like, uh, have really embraced this idea of food photos and even said that they would reward that, like they'd love to offer prizes or incentives or rewards for photographing their food because they realize they get a lot of like social media attention and people learn about their dishes because of these photos. Um, so over Christmas, we actually piloted a rewards program where um, you know, we featured select businesses and offered people rewards for spotting at those businesses. Um, and the average business that we featured in that program got four times the photos that month uh, because of just like a small reward. It wasn't like 50% off, it was just a little incentive. Um, and we saw that, you know, hey, this really, this really could benefit the restaurant. It could get restaurants that weren't really on our map on the map. Um, and it worked for restaurants from higher end to lower end. And so for restaurants that are embracing it, it can be a really powerful marketing tool and way to just um, you know, get people authentically talking about your restaurant, which you know ultimately benefits it in the end. And on a personal note, I kind of want my last question to be: um, Food Spotting is such a beautifully designed app. Um, are there any other apps out there that you've come across lately that you're just totally in love with, or that you're really interested in? Yeah. So I mean, one app that I love is Time Hop. Uh, Time Hop sends you a reminder every day of what you did this day last year. And the app lets you see what you did this day many years ago. And especially as we've kind of been uh, you know, closing this one chapter, Food Spying starting another one, it's been amazing to see like, oh, you know, a year ago was the first time we were on TV on the Today Show, or three years ago I met my co-founder Ted, or whatever that milestone was. Um, just being reminded of that. It's really powerful and it makes you thankful for how far you've come. And I think that um, you know, that's, that's, that's really special. And just remembering that you know, when we started this, we didn't set out to build a big giant mega company like we wanted to just make that we wanted this app to be real and just remembering how far we've come and all the people that have made it possible and all the investors that have made it possible and just the moments when we're high and when we're the high the highs and the lows um, and that's been really cool and time hops a great app that reminds you of those things and I reminds you to be thankful great and we have a lot to be thankful for Indeed. Well, Alexei Andrzejewski from Food Spotting and now Open Table as well. Thank you so much for coming by. Congratulations again. Thank you so much.